like to follow along with our reading for this morning, I invite you to turn to Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning with the 25th verse, where we find these words. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The Word of God for the people of God. I want to take you on a trip. I want you to imagine with me right now that we are suddenly on a hillside lush with green grass and we're all sitting down on the grass because there's no chairs there's no pews we're just sitting down on the good solid earth the sun is shining and as we all quiet down you can hear the sound of birds in the background chirping. As we look around us, we see these fields of the rows of Sharon, the, these red flowers that just cover the area, absolutely beautiful, an amazing sight, either direction we look. And we're sitting there, and Jesus begins to speak to us. He sees the birds and the flowers, the green grass. And it occurs to him that this maybe is a way to speak to each and every one of us about one of the worst problems that we have. And that is worry. We are champion warriors. We truly are. We worry about more things than you could possibly put on a list. And if we run out of things, we'll make up things to worry about. We don't, we don't give up easily when it comes to worrying. I mean, we worry if we're not worrying, right? Yeah. And it was no different for that crowd that was sitting there with Jesus that day. He said, why, why do you worry so much about so many things? Why are you so worried? Do you worry that you won't have something to eat? Do you worry that you won't have the, the right clothes? Do you worry that what, what is it that you're worrying about? 
we understand exactly what he is asking us because we worry about all those things. We worry to make sure that we've got the, the right stuff and enough of it and all of those sorts of things. And he looks at us and he says, look, do you hear those birds? Do you hear them out there singing, chirping away? Do you know not one of them has a farm? Not one of them plants or sows? Not one of them has a barn where they store up enough grain to be sure that they got seed throughout the winter? Do you? And yet they are out there singing because God provides for their needs. Do you think you are worth less to God than those birds? But look at these flowers around us. Absolutely gorgeous. God has clothed the earth with all of these beautiful flowers. And I'm here to tell you, even King Solomon was not dressed as well as these flowers are. And yet you worry. You worry about what you're going to wear. If you've got the right label in your clothes, you know, those clothing manufacturers got real smart because not only do you need to be sure you got the right label, but they put the labels on the outside now so everybody else can see you got the right label. Because after all, you wouldn't want to be wearing just clothes, right? I mean, you want the right clothes. And we worry about whether or not we've got the right clothes because last week's right clothes aren't the right clothes this week. Yeah. We worry about a lot of things. One of the things that we worry the most about is tomorrow. And if, and if you are worried about tomorrow, you've got a lot of people around you that are in the same place. We worry about tomorrow. And why do we do that? Well, you know, there's some wisdom, right, in making sure that things are covered for tomorrow, making sure... We worry an awful lot about it, though. We want to we wanna make sure we've got not only tomorrow tomorrow covered but all the tomorrows that are coming after that right is tomorrow coming yeah I don't know are you worried about it <laughs> well well here's the thing here's the thing I think what you really need to be concentrating on, what I need to be concentrating on, what we all need to be concentrating on is not tomorrow, but today. Because today is here. Today is with us. And too many people put all of their energy and all of their thought in tomorrow and they completely miss today today just passes by because because I'm worried about tomorrow you know I, I'm thinking of what I'm going to do tomorrow whatever that tomorrow is I'm thinking about what I'm going to need tomorrow I'm thinking about who I'm going to see tomorrow well who'd you see today who were you with today? What were the opportunities today? What were the challenges today? There's this old man. I can't tell you how old he is, and it doesn't really matter. But the problem with this old man is he is always happy. Now, I'm worried about that. Yeah, I mean, he is always happy. And asking him, why are you happy? 
You know what his reply is? It's the silliest reply I ever heard. Why? To be happy. He says he is happy because he has the present. What? He has the present. Really? Yeah. I've got the present. I am enjoying every moment of this moment. I am invested in this moment. Well, what about tomorrow? It hadn't come yet. What about yesterday? It's helped me learn how to better enjoy today. I have the present. Oh. I can't tell you how many folks that I know, including myself, who have given up, wasted, and lost a whole lot of presents worrying about tomorrow. Worrying about yesterday and not enjoying the present. I can't tell you how many families I have known who have missed the present with their children, with their family. Because they were preparing for tomorrow, you see. By the way, you know, Maisie's almost ready for college. You know, be, be worrying about that. Okay? No, that's, that's kind of our mindset. We're worrying about tomorrow, and we're not in the present. We're not worrying about today and today's worries. We're worrying about worries that haven't even occurred yet. Things, and, and most of the time we worry about things we have no control over. And that worries us because we have no control. Yeah. Jesus keeps poking at us and saying, why are you so worried? Do you have faith in God? God knows what you need. Do you have faith in God? Have you pursued that faith in Him? That faith in the kingdom? Have you, have you lived there as opposed to trying to live in tomorrow? The present. That's today. Are you enjoying it? Will you enjoy it? Will you see it for what it is? A gift. Will you spend it well? With those you love and those you meet? One of my favorite warriors was Martha. You remember the story of Mary and Martha. Jesus has come to visit him. Can you imagine Jesus saying, oh, by the way, I'm coming by your house tomorrow? Can you imagine that? Holy smokes. I mean, we would just be beside ourselves. We would, we would just have the place torn apart, you know. We'd be painting all the walls. We'd be tearing out the rugs. We, I mean, we'd just be doing, we'd be going crazy. Not to mention the menu. I mean, what, what does he like to eat? I don't know. You know, maybe I'll try that new recipe I saw. On, no, no, I better not do that. Go with the old favorites. And, and, and you just worry, worry, worry. And Martha was just tearing the place apart in worry. And Jesus asked her, he said, why, Martha, Martha, why are you worried about so many things? She was missing the whole day with him. She was missing the opportunity to sit down 
and be with him. He wouldn't have cared if she'd thrown a grilled cheese sandwich out there. It would have been fine. We can worry ourselves so much that we miss life itself. And he wants you and I to hear. He wants you... I know there are some things that are worthy of of worrying about but that's a very very small amount of the many worries we carry if you're looking for something to give up for Lent because we're right in the in the beginning of if you're looking for something to give up let me add to your list give up worry all of those worries and just say to yourself, I'm going to trust him with God. I'm going to let him have him. And I'm going to enjoy the present. You know, one of the big worries that I hear from people, I guess I hear it because I'm a pastor, but a lot of people worry that they're not good enough. That they haven't done well enough. That they, that they haven't done all the things that God expects of them and they're, not really, they're really not good enough. And if God knows everything I've done and everything I've thought and everything I've said through my entire life, I, then I know I am not good enough for God to love me. Jesus says to us all, don't worry. God loves you more than you can possibly imagine. I love you more than you can possibly imagine. But I will show you just how much you are loved. This table is given to us so that we might understand. And at that final supper Jesus shared with his followers, he took the bread and in front of them all he blessed it and then he broke it. And he says, My body, like this bread, is broken for you. Broken for all of you. And then he took the cup. The cup of Elijah. of hope and he lifted it up and he blessed it and then he gave it to them also saying take and drink for within this cup is my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins I'm establishing a new covenant with all of you you are forgiven. He wants us to know. He wants us not to worry about our relationship with Him, with the One who created us. His love for us goes beyond, beyond anything we have done or will do. 
His desire for us is unmatched. He wants you and I to stop worrying about that. He's got it covered. It's taken care of. Just have faith in that. This is his table. If you are visiting with us today for the first time, you need to know you are welcome at his table. Each and every one who desires to receive is welcome at his table. I'm going to ask those who are helping to serve to come first. And once they have received, our choir will come down and they will receive. And then finally, if you will come at the direction of the ushers, you too are invited to be at his table. And I will tell you, all the bread is gluten-free. One less worry. Mm -hmm.